Chapter 6 Sunday was a bit odd for Rika. At church, people she barely knew were coming over for an introduction to Daryl. She saw looks in some of the mama's eyes, telling her they were thinking of him for a daughter. Many of the young ladies of town came over to get an introduction, only to see their faces fall when she introduced him as her husband. Daryl took it all in calmly. He stayed close to Rika, wishing the other young ladies in town would realize he was taken. He'd never had so many women interested in him, which made sense because everyone in Beckham knew him. Here he was a stranger. As Rika watched it all, she couldn't help but wonder if he was regretting their hasty marriage. She'd experimented with a new hairstyle that morning, which allowed many of the tendrils of her hair to fall freely, which she knew he liked, but there were certainly other women in town who he would prefer to spend his life with. After church, he slipped his arm around her waist as they left the building. I'm glad that's over. I felt like a piece of meat at auction in there, he said as they walked away. Rika laughed aloud. You certainly have a way with words, Daryl. Have you ever thought of being a writer? Me? A writer? I think the world would open up and suck me inside if I ever contemplated something like that. It's against the natural order of things for certain. What a thought. A man like he was couldn't do anything intellectual like writing. He was meant to work with his hands. She walked toward a meadow where she'd once seen a man and woman picnicking, knowing that's where she wanted their picnic to be. It had been in the spring, just before school let out for the year, and ever since, she hadn't been able to walk by the meadow without thinking of doing the same. I think you could do it. Your natural language makes me think of poetry. He shook his head. I think you have me confused with your other husband. Where is he? Excuse me, she asked, very confused. The husband you have me confused with. I will need to find him and strangle him. I'm a one-woman man, and I need a woman who feels the same about me. He winked at her, making her blush. You are a crazed lunatic at times, Daryl Miller. How did I get so lucky as to have you in my life? She stopped in the middle of the meadow and opened the picnic basket, removing the quilt she'd added. As she smoothed it out, she thought about making a special quilt for their bed. She wanted something pretty now that she didn't live alone. She was amazed at how much more she cared about little details, now that she was sharing her life with Daryl. I'm the lucky one. As soon as they were sitting in the middle of the quilt, she carefully unpacked their lunch. She'd made fried chicken, potato salad, and chocolate cookies. She also had a big jar of lemonade. Fixing their plates, she handed one to him. Thank you for making lunch for us, he said softly. You make me feel like I'm the most important man in the world, and I've never felt that way. He leaned toward her cupping her cheek, with one hand, kissing her softly. Without warning he plucked a few of the pins from her hair, watching some of it fall to her shoulders in a cascade of curls. Have I ever told you how very much I love your hair? She laughed softly. Please don't ever touch my hair until after four on school days. I have this feeling that you will never be content unless my hair is sticking every which way. You're right. I've never been mesmerized by a woman's hair before, but there's something about yours that really makes me a little bit crazy. I want to spend all my time touching it, and brushing it, and just looking at it. If you're trying to make me feel courted and admired, you're doing a very good job of it. He grinned. Of course I want you to feel that way, but I'm not doing anything special to make it happen. I'm just acting like I naturally act with a beautiful woman beside me. She felt her heart give a little flutter as she smiled at him. You, Daryl Miller, are good for my self-esteem. I don't think I've ever had a man interested in me in all my twenty-five years, and now I sit here with you, basking in the attention of a very handsome man. I worried at church today that you would regret our marriage with so many beautiful young ladies to choose from, but you seem to be content with me. I'm not sure why, but I am grateful that God sent you into my life. He reached forward and rubbed his thumb across her bottom lip. 
I know we're doing everything sort of backwards, but I don't ever want you to think I wouldn't have chosen you if given a chance. I was attracted to you immediately, and I would have liked a chance to know you before marriage, but we can make it work now. I hope so. She was still worried about it, and she wasn't sure why. Probably because of the interest the other women had shown in him at church. If he was a sought-after man, why would he choose her? Look at Harve and Doris. They married even sooner after they met than you and I did. And they're happy. Harve told me yesterday that he loves Doris and wouldn't change her. I can see on Doris's face that she loves him. If those two can make it work with four children involved, we can make it work with just the two of us. Rika shrugged. Maybe they were able to make it work because of the children. Maybe the children added another dimension to the whole thing that made them want to make it work more, so they tried harder. Is that possible? Daryl looked at her. No one wants a marriage to work more than I do at this moment. I think you're an incredible woman, Rika Miller, and I want us to look back in a few months and wonder what we ever worried about in the beginning. She smiled. I need to remember that we're both fully invested in our marriage. It's not just one of us needing to make it work. It's two. Three. She frowned at him. Three? I believe God is in our marriage as well. A cord made with three strands is stronger than one made with only two. Don't you think? We'll use that cord to tie us together for the rest of our lives. She smiled and unwrapped a small pile of cookies from a cloth napkin. For that, you get a cookie. He laughed. Anything for cookies. After they had cleaned up their picnic, they walked back toward the teacherage. I hope there aren't any problems with my job now that I'm married. In a lot of areas, teachers aren't allowed to marry during their term, but that's not part of my contract here. Are you worried about it? He asked. Not really, but there are some women in this town who would do anything to make my life difficult. I just hope none of them are on the school board. She was thinking of Mrs. Linden. The older woman caused her enough trouble just by sending her children to school. Hopefully not. I don't know where we'd live if that happened, but we'd figure it out. Do you plan to continue teaching for a long time? He knew eventually he'd have to sort out permanent housing for them, but he wanted to know how soon. Rika shrugged. Until children come along, probably. I don't see being able to keep working after I have them, but I would love to work up until they're born. He nodded. That works for me. If the school board tries to fight you, we'll fight back. He opened the door to the teacherage and let her precede him inside. Are you really all right with me taking a nap? I know we're trying to spend time together today, but I'm so tired. Of course. I'll do my lesson plans for the week while you sleep. You need to be able to work tomorrow. He leaned down and kissed her, his fingers automatically winding through her hair and plucking out the rest of the pins. He held out his hands, palm up, with all of the pins in them. Oops. Rika took the pins and walked over to put them on her dresser. Oops. I think that was a little more deliberate than an oops. She picked up her bag where she kept her school books and opened it. I'll be as quiet as I can. If I make too much noise rustling papers around, I can go to the school and work there. Did you talk to people about the school dance on Friday night? He asked as he removed his shirt. He'd sleep in his pants to keep from offending her delicate sensibilities, but she could deal with seeing him shirtless. I did. I even got Mrs. Gottweiler to put up a sign on the bulletin board at the mercantile. We're going to have cookies and cakes, punch, and lots of dancing. She told me there's a group of men in town who love to play their instruments together, and she's going to get that arranged. I'll have my students make decorations for the dance, and we'll start it at seven sharp. You've done a lot of work for it. I can't wait to dance with my beautiful bride. He walked over and kissed her once more before lying down. I like being able to grab you and kiss you whenever I feel like it. It makes me happy. 
Before Rika could figure out how to respond to that, he was already asleep. She frowned at him for a moment before turning to her work. Having him around was certainly making life more interesting. Only two days with him, and already she couldn't figure out if her heartbeat would ever return to normal. She worked for an hour steadily before getting up and starting supper. She wanted him to be able to eat as soon as he was hungry. She was making extra as well, so she could send him to work with a good lunch the next day. It had never occurred to her that she would someday be managing a career and a husband, but she was doing it now. Her marriage came first, of course, but her pupils were almost as important to her. She knew other women were able to do it, and she would do it, too. As soon as her supper was cooking, she sat back down at the table and wrote a letter to her parents. They were expecting her to come home the next weekend, and she didn't feel like it was a good time with being newly married. And of course her parents weren't yet aware of her marriage. The letter she wrote explained that she'd married suddenly, but that she was happy. She would come home in a few weeks once she and Daryl had settled into married life a bit better. She folded the letter, hoping her parents would understand. She knew her mother would, but her father had always been a little less understanding than she would have preferred. She guessed his reaction truly didn't matter, because there was nothing he could do about it now. She was above the age of consent by a long way, and she was content being married to her Daryl. Hopefully someday they would realize they loved one another, and she could be truly happy. It sounded like a fairy tale ending to her, and she wasn't one to believe in fairy tales, but she would hope and dream. She settled down to read a novel, curled up on the couch. Sundays had always been novel reading days for her, though she had to keep her novels hidden in case someone came by. School teachers were not to read frivolous literature like novels, but sometimes she just didn't care. Shakespeare was all well and good, but give her one of the Bronte sisters any day. Even her mother didn't know of her penchant for novel reading, and she'd have been scandalized if she had. Never mind, though, because the novels kept Rika's mind filled with laughter and thoughts of love, while the common everyday works of literature she used for lessons with her students didn't. Without the novels, she would never have had the courage to marry a stranger, even if he was the twin brother of one of her closest friends. It was hard to believe that she was now in a marriage and a courtship at the same time. They really were doing things backwards, but she had hope because she had read novels. Maybe that wasn't something she should be proud of, but having courage was something foreign to her. She'd married a stranger, and she was going to do everything she could to make the very most of it. Chapter 7 Monday morning, Rika was up a bit earlier than usual to make a good breakfast for her and Daryl. She usually just had toast or something equally easy, but she was certain that wouldn't sustain him through hours of hard, physical labor. As soon as breakfast was ready, she woke him. She hated that he didn't have a little more time to rest before starting his full work schedule, but she understood where Harv was coming from as well, needing the help desperately. Daryl woke up to see his beautiful wife standing over him. Her hair was still down, and he smiled at her. An angel waking me in the morning. I think I've died and gone to heaven. She laughed. You're silly. It's time to wake up. You need to be at work in an hour. I have your lunch made, and your breakfast is ready. And coffee? Did you make plenty of coffee? I might need a few gallons to make it through the day. Why couldn't he spend another week in bed with his beautiful bride? I made a pot of coffee, not gallons. His hand whipped out from under the covers and pulled her down into bed with him. I won't muss you, because your hair isn't fixed yet. She grinned. But your breakfast might get cold. Not that she minded at that moment. There is that. He pulled her head down for a kiss, running his hands up and down her sides. She was still in her nightgown and a robe, and he liked how she looked that way, she wasn't the proper teacher and instead was just Rika, his very kissable wife. She sighed and sank into him, enjoying the kiss more than she really should have. She was starting to wonder if she was a wanton woman with as much as she enjoyed him, 
but then she realized that she was worrying too much. She needed to just let things happen as they would. Wait, did you say coffee and breakfast were ready? What are you doing lying on top of me? Get off me. She shook her head at him as she got up, walking to the stove to pour his coffee. Sometimes she had no idea to react to his teasing. It was odd, but no one in her life had ever teased her. Not even her brother. He was two years younger than her, and they'd treated each other with politeness, not teasing. After watching the way Daryl was with Doris, she could see that he had never even thought to not tease his sisters. After he'd finished his breakfast, Daryl got to his feet, pulling her to hers. I don't want to leave you. Do you think I could talk Harv and the school district into giving us each about three months off? We could just gaze into each other's eyes. You don't think that even that exciting event would get boring after a while? He shrugged. Not for me. You have the most beautiful eyelashes I've ever seen. They're so long and thick. I look into your eyes, and I feel like I'm completely losing myself. She stepped back into his arms and held him tightly. You are a truly good man. Thank you for coming into my life. He grinned, grabbed his lunch from the counter, and headed out the door. I'll be home as soon as my evil brother-in-law releases me from my bondage. She grinned as he left, closing the door behind him. He really did bring excitement to her otherwise dull world. She hoped she wouldn't realize it was too much excitement as time went by. Once the dishes were done and the cabin was neat and tidy, she took her books to the schoolhouse. The children started to get there around eight most mornings, though school didn't start until nine. She did her best to always be the first person there, available for any of the children who felt like they needed extra help. That particular morning, she sat at her desk, going over her lesson plans and making certain she was ready for the day. They would start their art project that included making decorations for the dance the next day, and she planned to announce to the children there would be a dance after lunch. She knew they'd be excited, especially the older children. As she read over her history lesson, one of the older girls came into the schoolhouse, and she didn't notice her until the girl said her name. Miss Hughes? Rika looked up and smiled. Yes? How can I help you, Gloria? The girl was 16 and one of her best students. She enjoyed talking to her when there was time. Could I ask you something? Of course. Rika frowned at the girl, wondering what her topic of conversation was that she was starting out that way. Usually Gloria didn't have a problem asking whatever was on her mind. Mr. Jackson has asked my mother if he can court me, and my mother said yes. He has six children, and his wife died last year. Do you know him? Rika shook her head. None of his children come here, do they? No, ma'am. His oldest is a ten-year-old girl, and she has to stay home and take care of the other children. From what I understand, she's expected to do all the cooking and cleaning. That's terrible. I think so, too, Gloria said. Anyway, Mr. Jackson is going to take me out driving after school, and I really don't want to go, but my ma keeps telling me that this is a good opportunity for me. I should be pleased that a man his age wants to court me and possibly marry me. She thinks I'm too bookish and that no man would ever want to marry me as a result. Rika frowned at that. I've always been a book lover. If I have a spare minute or two, my nose is buried in a book, and I'm reading as many pages as I can until I'm forced to return to reality. Did you know I got married on Friday afternoon? Gloria shook her head. No, ma'am. Well, I did. I married a wonderful man who has no problem at all with how much I enjoy reading. If you wait for a man who suits you and don't marry the first man that comes along, I think you'll be happier in the long run. But how do I convince my mother of that? She's certain that I'll die an old maid if I don't allow Mr. Jackson to court me. But he's an old man. At least 35. Rika smiled at her student's idea of what constituted old. 
Would your mother be amenable to a visit from me to discuss things with her? I don't want to interfere, but I can't imagine you being happy getting married right away. You need to go to college. You're the kind of girl who would thrive surrounded by books for the rest of her life. I think so, too, but make sure you don't say that to my mother. I think she would have a heart attack at the idea of me going off to school. She wants me to be under her thumb for the rest of my life, having babies, and just being an obedient daughter, I guess. Gloria frowned as she looked down at her hands. I've always been obedient to my mother. I do what she tells me with no hesitation or question. But I don't want to be courted, and especially not by an old man. I can understand that, Gloria. Don't worry. If your mother will receive me, I'll be certain to talk to her. Rika wasn't certain she'd be able to get through to her, but she thought she could. She said a silent prayer, thanking God for sending her a mother who understood her so well. I'll ask her tonight. Gloria got to her feet. I always appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, Miss Hughes. It's like you think I'm an adult and worthy of your respect. No one else seems to feel that way. Well, I really do. We'll make sure you don't have to marry old Mr. Jackson. Rika watched as the teenager left the schoolhouse to go and wait outside with all the others. She wanted to slap the girl's mother for making it seem like she was less for not courting. Marriage wasn't what everyone wanted, and someday women would be able to make all their own decisions. She just wished that someday was now. She stood to write her new name on the blackboard. She hadn't thought to do it until right that minute, but Gloria had called her Miss Hughes. It would take her a bit to be able to respond to Mrs. Miller, but it was her new name, and it made her heart flutter a bit, thinking about what had given her the name. After lunchtime that day, she made her announcement. On Friday evening this week, we're going to have a dance, right here at the school. All of you need to bring anything you think you can use to make decorations for the dance. Why are we having a dance, Miss Hughes? Peter, the boy who asked, blushed. I mean, Mrs. Miller. Because I've never been involved in a dance in this community. Most communities do more things together than this one, and now that I'm married, I'm going to do my best to help people here become tighter knit. Molly, the youngest of Mrs. Linden's children, raised her hand. My ma says you and your friends are troublemakers, and you want nothing more than to change salmon into something that no one here wants. Is that true? It was all Rika could do to continue smiling at the child, forcing herself to remember that she couldn't take out her anger with Molly's mother on the girl. It is not true. My friends and I want salmon to be a good, welcoming place for anyone to live. We're working hard to help it become just that. Molly shrugged. Are students allowed to go to the dance? Rika smiled and nodded. It's my hope that everyone in town will attend the dance. There's no cost to get in, but we are asking everyone bring either a plate of cookies or a cake to share. My mother bakes the best cakes in all of Oregon. Maybe the whole world. Bobby said. It was out of turn, but Rika couldn't argue with him. Doris made wonderful baked goods. Then you're going to have to make sure that she sends a cake for us. Are you and Uncle Darrell going to be at the dance? Matthew asked. Rika nodded. Yes, we are. I hope your parents will be there as well. Are you going to kiss Uncle Darrell in front of everyone like you did at your wedding? Bobby asked. She gave him her sternest look as all of the children giggled. I'm married to your uncle now, but we won't be talking about the two of us kissing during school, or at any other time for that matter. She turned to the board and wrote down an arithmetic problem. She needed the children to concentrate on school again, and she needed her cheeks to stop flaming red. As soon as school was out, Gloria came to the front of the class again, lingering and making it clear she was waiting for the other students to leave so she could have a private talk with Rika. Would you mind sending a letter home with me, so you could ask my ma if you could stop by? She'd like that better than me asking her if you can. She likes things to be done all proper like. 
I'd be happy to. Just give me a minute, and I'll write the note for you. Rika pulled a clean sheet of paper from her notebook and quickly wrote the note in her perfect handwriting. There you go. Tell her I'm happy to meet with her, whenever is convenient for her. As the girl took the note and hurried away, Rika cleaned the blackboard and walked through the school to make sure the students had left everything tidy, endeavoring to sweep every corner. It was her job to make sure the schoolroom was clean at all times, after all. After she had finished, she walked over to Doris's house, wanting to ask her advice about Gloria's situation. She couldn't actually mention Gloria's name, but if she could find out a little more about Mr. Jackson, she would feel as if she was better equipped for the upcoming conversation with Gloria's mother. Doris had obviously been watching for her, because as she raised her hand to knock, the door was opened, and she was pulled inside. You were seen picnicking in the meadow with my brother and I hear there were at least a few kisses exchanged. Rika shook her head at Doris. Do you have spies everywhere? She looked over at Gretchen, who was sewing and trying not to laugh. Hi, Gretchen. How was school today? Gretchen asked, giving Rika an out from the interrogation Doris obviously had planned. It was good. I talked to the children about the dance on Friday night. I'm really getting excited about it. Rika sat down across from Gretchen, reaching for one of the cookies in the middle of the table. Doris really did make the best baked goods. We haven't had a dance here in town in. I can't remember how long. I wasn't old enough that my mother would allow me to go with an escort, though. I had to go with her and Papa, and I had to stay beside them. Reginald asked me to dance one time and neither of my parents were pleased, but at least they didn't stop us. Rika covered Gretchen's hand with her own. It must be really hard for you. Gretchen shrugged, ignoring the tear that coursed down her cheek. I always knew I'd marry him. It was like the moment we met, we knew our souls were meant to live as one. We were inseparable at school and would have been the rest of the time if our parents had allowed it. I'm so sorry you lost him. Rika hadn't ever really thought about the man behind Gretchen's condition. Yes, she knew his name, but thinking of him as Gretchen saw him, she couldn't imagine the pain the other girl was going through. She was already falling in love with Daryl after just a few days. Reginald and Gretchen had years together. Gretchen smiled. As my mother tells me every single day, I can't bury myself with him. Especially not with a baby on the way. Dora sat down at the table with them and grabbed a cookie of her own. Have you thought about what you're going to do when the baby comes? Can you stay in the house with your mother then? Gretchen shrugged. I'm going to have to. I don't have anywhere else to go. I'm hoping mother takes one look at her grandchild and falls in love with him. Stranger things have happened. I hope so, too. Dora smiled at Gretchen and then her eyes met Rika's. They both knew it was unlikely, but what could they do? Gretchen was making the choice to stay there. Rika sighed. I have a question for you both. Do either of you know a Mr. Jackson with six children who lost his wife last year? Gretchen wrinkled her nose. As soon as Reginald died, he asked to court me. His wife hadn't been dead for four months. He's a horrible man. I think his wife killed herself just to get away from him. Really? That's awful. You should smell him. And his breath. Everyone says that his daughter, who just turned ten, is taking care of the house, doing all the cooking, and taking care of her younger siblings. He's asked out every eligible woman here in Salmon and now rumor has it he's taken to trying to court some of the schoolgirls. Gloria was seen talking to him at her house last week, and everyone thinks her mother is going to make her court him. Rika didn't want to admit that was true, but it sounded like Gretchen already knew exactly what was going on anyway. How she always knew so much when so few people would talk to her always surprised Rika. Gloria talked to me before school today. 
Her mother is making her go for a drive with him because she's afraid that Gloria is going to be an old maid because she reads too much. Rika took off her spectacles and rubbed her eyes. Gloria is my very brightest student. If anyone could go to college, it would be her, and that's what she wants. Of course, all her mother wants for her is marriage. Gretchen frowned. Sounds like another salmon mother is trying to control the lives of her children. I had a feeling it was happening. I didn't know Gloria was so bright, though. She was a few grades behind me in school. I'm going to talk to her mother, and I hope it will help, but I have this horrible feeling it won't. I don't want to go to school on Monday morning to find out my best student has been forced to marry a man she doesn't like so she can help him raise a houseful of children. She's too young. She has too much promise. Rika felt tears of frustration pop into her eyes. How could she change the world one student at a time when their parents were always fighting against her? You have to at least try, Doris responded. You care too much to do anything else. I do. I wish I didn't, but how do I stop myself from caring about every single student? Chapter 8 Daryl stopped on his way home from work that day to pick some of the wildflowers growing in the meadow where they'd picnicked. He knew his Rika would love them, and he needed her to be happy. He wondered just how much longer they would be in the courting portion of their relationship. He didn't know about her, but he was more than ready to move on. When he walked in the door with a bouquet of flowers in his hand, he put his lunch pail on the counter and walked over to where she was stirring a soup on the stove. I thought of you today, he said as he planted a kiss on the side of her neck. Rika smiled at him, but the smile was distant. I thought of you, too. Are you all right? You look like something's wrong. She thought about talking to him about Gloria and Mr. Jackson, but she wasn't sure if she should be bringing her troubles home. They were barely married. Shouldn't she be trying to keep things light and positive at home? I'm fine. Just a little tired. The children are very excited about making the decorations for the dance. He frowned, knowing there was more to it, but not sure how to get her to talk to him about whatever it was. I brought you these. He handed her the flowers, with a flourish, and Rika took them with a big smile. Whatever had been bothering her seemed to disappear the instant she saw the flowers. Thank you. Tears popped into her eyes and she felt silly as she found a glass to put the flowers in. What's wrong? Why did flowers make you cry? He had never been able to understand why women seemed to cry at the littlest things, but he wanted to make sure his Rika wasn't sad. No one has ever brought me flowers. I thought they'd look beautiful in a vase, but then I realized I didn't have a vase because no one has ever brought me flowers. It makes me sad that no one has ever thought to do something so sweet for me before, and then I think of all the women in the world who have never had anyone bring them flowers, and it makes me cry for them. Because everyone should have that single moment of sheer delight when they're handed flowers by someone who is special to them. You thought all that in the three seconds from when I handed you the flowers until you turned? He was utterly amazed that anyone could think all of that so fast. His wife was awfully special. She nodded. It's a curse. I'd call it a blessing. It means you have a huge heart, and you have a capacity to care about others that most people have no idea about. I think it makes me care about you even more. Care. Not love. She loved him. Did he not love her in return? She turned her back on him and continued stirring the soup. It didn't need to be stirred any longer, but she needed a moment with him unable to see her face. When she put their supper on the table, he filled their glasses with milk, feeling like he was walking on eggshells. He'd upset her tonight, but he wasn't sure how. He didn't want her to be sad. He wanted to only fill her life with love and goodness. How was work today? she asked softly. She needed to get her mind back to the present and quit worrying about whether or not he loved her. She also had to get Gloria out of her mind. 
worrying would never solve anything. It was good. Busy as busy can be. I was able to free up Harf to sit down and actually get some invoices written out. He's been so busy with the next project, he hadn't been able to do that for a while. I honestly think we still need a third man to help us, but we're holding our own. Not catching up, but I don't think that's going to happen. Are you enjoying the work? I really am. I know it's not sitting around and thinking all day like what you do, but I was able to work with my hands, and I felt good at the end of the day. I like to put in a hard day's work. Daryl knew he should probably aspire to be more, but he did what made him happy. He hoped she didn't think less of him for that. I'm glad it's working out for you. I was a little afraid you'd hate it. You took quite a risk leaving everything you knew to move here and take on a job doing something you'd never done before. I needed to take a risk. I've done the same thing every day of my life. Well, since I got out of school, but I only went to school for a few months out of the year as well. I hope that makes sense. She nodded emphatically. I have never in my life done anything impulsively until I met you. Everything was always thought about and considered, and every risk was measured. I feel so good about doing something that was out of my comfort zone. You do? Yes. I even wrote to my parents. I was supposed to go home this coming weekend, but with the dance, I thought I needed to stay. So I wrote to them and told them I'd married and my husband worked Saturdays, so they'd know that I wouldn't be heading back home any weekend soon. He frowned at her. I want to meet your family. Don't worry. You will. I know my father is going to love you. He's a carpenter, and he thinks men are only real men if they work with their hands. Rika grinned. My mother will just be happy that I found someone who makes me happy. He took her hand in his. Do I make you happy, Rika? After a full 72 hours of marriage, I can honestly say you do. Now in a month or two that answer might change, her eyes twinkled as she teased him. What happened today to make you sad, he asked, determined to know why she'd looked so unhappy when he'd come in the door. He knew she was a great deal more serious than he was, but he was used to her being a bit more upbeat. She sighed. One of my students came to me today and told me that her mother is making her allow an older man in the community to court her. He's a widower with six small children, and her mother thinks she should be open to marrying him. According to Gretchen, he smells bad. Daryl frowned. Why would her mother do that? My parents had 14 children, and my mother cried when every one of us moved out. She tried to hide it, but she'd have red-rimmed eyes for days. He smiled for a moment. I bet she secretly rejoices when the youngest Ida May finally leaves. This girl is very intelligent. In fact, I think she has a good chance at getting a college scholarship if she wants one. Her mother thinks she's too studious and she will never find a man if she doesn't marry this one. You'd be surprised at how much mothers tend to worry about girls who don't spend all their time worried about their appearance and which beau will take them out on Saturday night. Now I understand. There are different expectations for boys and girls. If a boy studies hard, he can be anything he wants. A doctor, a lawyer, even a banker. If a girl does the same, people worry that she'll never marry. A woman is judged by the man she marries. A man is only judged on his own merit. It's wrong, but it's how our world is. So if we have a daughter who walks around reading all the time and never pays any attention to what she wears, you'll let her be? If she wants to be a doctor, you'll help her reach that goal? Yes, I will. I'd love to go talk to this girl's mother, because someone needs to talk some sense into her. How could she really think that her daughter would be better off with a man that much older than her who would expect her to raise his children? You know, if she had seen him at church, and they'd started up a flirtation, and she was interested in him, I'd still have reservations, but I wouldn't try to stop it. But this situation is totally different. 
The girl told me that she spoke to her mother and told her that she didn't want to let this man court her, and her mother told her she had no choice. Rika shook her head. In this day and age, we're beyond arranged marriages. Women should be able to choose who they want to marry, not agree to marry whoever their mother finds for them. She stood up, starting to clear the table. She hadn't eaten more than a few bites, but she was too upset to do so. Daryl watched her for a few minutes, realizing how genuinely upset she was with the situation. She wanted to help, but really all she could do was talk to the other woman, and if she was told to mind her own business, then that's what she'd have to do. She deeply cared about her students, and more than just academically. He wanted badly to fix the situation for her, but there was truly nothing he could do. He was simply the husband of the schoolteacher, and he had no say and no clout in the community. It wasn't as bad as Beckham, but it was still not what he wanted from life. He walked to the sofa and watched her work. When she'd finished, she walked over to sit with him, her head on his shoulder. He'd just put in an eleven-hour day at work, and she'd complain to him when he came home at the end of the day. I'm really sorry I talked to you about the situation. You shouldn't have to hear about my petty troubles at the end of your day. Daryl cupped her face in his hands. I wish I could fix all of your troubles for you. You have the right to tell me anything bad that happens. I'm here to listen. We're partners in life. Everything we do should be to help build that partnership. If you don't talk to me about your troubles, I won't have a real place in your life. She blinked at him, still having a hard time, believing this caring man was her husband. You really feel that way? I really do. He leaned down to brush his lips across hers, and she felt the familiar spark start in her stomach. His fingers went to her hair, and the next thing she knew her hair was down around her shoulders again. I'm so sorry. He frowned. What are you sorry about? She hadn't done anything to apologize for. I was planning on making sure my hair was down before you came home from work every night. I didn't, and I should have. Rika shook her head. Why should you have? Because you like it down. It's something simple enough I can do for you to make you happy, so I should do it. He frowned. Only if it makes you happy, too. I love your hair down, but you have a choice in how you wear it. I just like pulling the pins out and watching it fall around your shoulders. Rika sighed. I should have remembered, but I was too wrapped up in my own troubles. I'll be a better wife in the future. Then I'll die. Because if you get to be a better wife, I'm sure it will kill me, Daryl told her. How could she not see what she already meant to him? Chapter 9 Gloria brought Rika a note first thing Tuesday morning and, after dropping it off, went back outside without another word. Rika read the note, wondering why Gloria had acted so strangely. The note promised that Gloria's mother, Mrs. Sternum, would be there as soon as school was out for the day to discuss matters with her. Rika took a deep breath. She wasn't quite prepared for what she wanted to say to the woman, but she'd figure it out as she went. At lunchtime that day, Daryl surprised her by bringing his lunch to school and eating it with her. He brought a spare chair up to her desk, and the two of them ate together, with many of the children grinning at them. After he was gone, Rika felt like she had a better idea what she would say to Mrs. Sternum. Somehow the meal with him had made her feel more confident about the entire situation. She herself had waited until many considered her an old maid before marrying. Surely, she could explain the rightness of the action to Gloria's mother. When she dismissed her students, she waited at her desk, hoping that she would be able to speak clearly of her worries. Mrs. Sternum walked into the schoolhouse, looking very confident. She sat down in a chair near Rika's desk. I understand you want to see me. Yes, I'm concerned about Gloria. She's such a bright girl, and I think she has a real chance at getting a college scholarship. She needs to stay in school, though, and she needs to keep working on the things that interest her. Mrs. Sternum shook her head. 
My daughter has absolutely no interest in going to college. She's going to get married this weekend. Rika's jaw dropped. She is? Yes, her beau asked me for her hand last night. I told her at breakfast this morning that she would marry on Saturday. I do hope you'll come to the wedding, Miss Hughes. I know Gloria thinks a lot of you. Mrs. Miller, Rika corrected automatically. She'd been correcting the children about her name for two days, and it just popped out of her mouth. Obviously, the engagement was why Gloria had not spoken that morning. She was upset, and she didn't know what to say. How does Gloria feel about marrying Mr. Jackson? Oh, she's told you about him? That's wonderful. Actually, it's not. She told me she doesn't like him, and she has no desire to even let him court her. You're condemning your daughter to a lifetime of unhappiness if you force this on her. Mrs. Sternum frowned. She's a child. How can she possibly know what she wants? That's my point exactly. What's your point? Rika smiled. She's a child. A child has no business marrying and taking care of other children. A child should be in school with other children her age, learning everything she can before she's forced to face life as an adult. It isn't the right thing to do to force her to marry at 16. I know she's your daughter and not mine, but please at least consider what I'm saying. I don't understand her reservations with Mr. Jackson. Does she have a beau here at school? Is that the problem? Mrs. Sternum genuinely seemed perplexed by her daughter's misgivings. No, ma'am. She doesn't have a beau here at school. She's very attentive to her studies. She simply doesn't want to marry a man twice her age and be an instant mother to his six children. She has a right not to want those things. Rika leaned forward, hoping the other woman was listening to her. She needed her to understand that she really would be ruining her daughter's chance to have a future she wanted. Mrs. Sternum sighed heavily. I'll talk to her about it. I think she should be grateful I've arranged something like this for her, though. I do it because I care for her, not because I want to ruin her life. I do understand that. But your vision for her future is different than hers is. Don't you think a young lady should have a say in her own life? Mrs. Sternum got to her feet. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Miller. I hadn't heard you got married. Best wishes. Thank you. Rika watched as the other woman left the building, unsure if what she'd said had made the difference she wanted, but she had tried her very hardest. It's all she'd ever asked from her students, and it was all she could ask of herself. Instead of going to spend time with her friends, she went straight home and started supper. She had lingered longer than usual, and she didn't want Daryl to have to wait for his meal, though he'd given no indication that he minded waiting. He really was a good husband to her, and she wondered what she'd done to deserve to have a man treat her so well. She walked to the table and looked at the flowers in the glass there in the middle of the table, and she thought about how sweetly he'd brought them to her. She wasn't a woman who needed riches. She only needed a man who would be thoughtful at the end of his work day. And she'd found the most thoughtful man on the entire West Coast. Rika was putting supper on the table when the door opened and Daryl walked in. He had another fistful of flowers, but when he set his lunch pail on the counter, he pulled a vase out of it. I thought it would make you happier if I got you a vase for today's flowers, he said, grinning at her. She immediately teared up again, taking the flowers and the vase and arranging the flowers fussily. Then she walked into his arms, wrapping hers tightly around him. You have got to be the most thoughtful man on God's green earth. Only on earth? There are other planets, you know. He leaned down and buried his face in her hair, which she'd left down. He knew it was for him, and he was thrilled. She thought to accommodate his preferences and that pleased him more than it probably should. She laughed. I haven't been to other planets, but there's a good chance the men there are more considerate than you are. Face the facts, Jack. 
He put his wrist against his forehead in a dramatic motion. Jack? She doesn't even remember my real name. Rika stepped toward him, wrapped her arms around his neck, and pulled his head down for her kiss. It was the first time she'd initiated a kiss, and she tried to put all she felt for him into it. When she pulled away, his eyes seemed to be glazed over, and she knew she'd done well. I'm going to serve supper now. I hope you're hungry. He grinned at her, shaking his head. You are something else, Rika. I'm so glad Gretchen didn't want to marry me. She's prettier than I am. She's eight months pregnant with someone else's child. I don't need that. I'd have done it for Doris, but I married you for me. She put supper on the table and sat down across from him, her hand immediately going to his for their prayer. I talked to Gloria's mother today, she said softly. Oh. How did that go? He'd thought of the situation several times throughout the day, but Rika hadn't mentioned it at lunch. I couldn't tell you I was going to at lunch because there were too many children around. She came in right after school and told me that Gloria is getting married on Saturday. She's arranged the marriage. Are you serious? Rika nodded. I talked to her about it, telling her about Gloria's hopes and dreams. She told me that Gloria is a child and there's no way she can know what she wants at this time. That's right. She's a child, so she can't be expected to marry a man with six kids and give up her childhood. My argument exactly. I think she may have listened, but to be honest, I'm just not sure. I hope so. I'll know tomorrow when Gloria comes into school. She didn't even speak to me this morning, just handed me her mother's note and left. I realized why when her mother mentioned she'd told her over breakfast she was expected to marry on Saturday. He shook his head. I'll kidnap the girl if I have to. That wedding isn't happening. Rika grinned. Thanks for making my problems your own, but I don't think kidnapping one of my students could possibly be the answer. Maybe not. I could shoot Mr. Jackson. And leave six orphan children? We'll adopt them all. He looked around the house with a frown. No, that's a bad idea. We'd never be able to consummate the marriage if that happened. Rika couldn't help it. She giggled. And once she started giggling, she simply couldn't stop. After a minute or two with tears streaming down her face and a couple of sips of water to stop the spasm of coughing that went with the giggles, she finally calmed. You are a breath of fresh air in my life. You make me laugh like no one ever has. How did I live so long without you? He tilted his head to one side to think about her question. Just lucky, I guess. Asterisk. When Gloria came into the schoolhouse the next morning, she had a smile on her face. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. She hurried to Rika and hugged her. My mother said you made her understand that she was doing me a disservice by forcing a marriage. She's going to let me be a child for a while longer. That's wonderful. Rika was thrilled to have her favorite student smiling again. And do you know what the best part is? Gloria asked, her eyes dancing with laughter. No, what's the best part? Mr. Jackson came over last night, and she wouldn't even let him see me. She told him I was a child, and I needed to be treated as such. I wouldn't be allowed to court him or even see him until I was old enough to make decisions for myself, and that would be at least a couple of years down the road. I'm so happy for you. Rika couldn't believe her talk with the girl's mother had gone so well, but she was ecstatic. Now you can live a normal life again. Do you want to sit inside and read until it's time for class to start? It was something she rarely let any of the students do. No, thank you. I think I want to go outside and watch the boys play baseball and maybe talk to some of the other girls. If I have two years of childhood left, I think I should make the most of them instead of running around with my nose in a book all the time. Gloria hurried out the door, a skip to her step that hadn't been there for a while. 
Rika smiled as she wrote some sentences to diagram on the board. Everything was right in her world again, and she could concentrate on the dance in two more days. She would finally have a chance to dance with her husband, the man she loved. Asterisk. By Friday morning, Rika was getting used to sleeping with her husband. It had seemed so strange at first, but now it was second nature. She found herself wrapped in his arms most mornings, and there was nothing she wanted to do about it. Daryl made her feel both loved and protected. Her friends were both meeting her at the schoolhouse at lunchtime to help her decorate the school for the dance, and she had all of the decorations laid out beside her desk at school. She practically bounced out of bed to get breakfast started, wanting to start her day as soon as she could. She decided that this would be the day when she told Daryl she loved him. While they danced together in her school, Rika fixed pancakes and bacon for breakfast, wanting to give Daryl a hearty meal before he started his day. With them having the dance that night, she knew it was going to be a very long day for him. She giggled as she made a pancake into the shape of a heart, but then she was afraid for him to see it, so she put it at the bottom of his stack. Still, she knew she was giving him her heart, even if he didn't. When she walked over to the bed to wake him, he groaned and pulled her down on top of him. I need to sleep a little longer. Come back to bed with me. You're not a morning person, are you, husband? I would be if mornings came just a little bit later in the day. He held her close, kissing the side of her neck, knowing it would make her squeal. Who would have thought the schoolteacher would have such a fun side to her? No one. I don't think I had a fun side until I met you, she said, getting to her feet. Coffee's ready. Come and eat. All right. He pulled his pants on while she turned her head, and then he walked to the table, taking a big drink of his coffee. How do people who don't drink coffee ever get out of bed? She shrugged. I could get up without coffee. I like coffee, but I don't need it to kickstart my day. Well, I'm not sure I like you then. He grinned at her, and she shook her head. You are silly. Sometimes I wonder if I ever laughed before I met you, and now it seems like that's the only thing I ever do. I'm glad. If I can bring laughter to your life, then I'm doing something right. He hid a yawn behind his hand. Do you plan for us to eat before the dance tonight? I only have an hour between work and the dance. I think your boss should let you leave early for the dance, but I understand. I'll have something quick ready for you when you get here. Then we'll go over to the school together. I still need to bake some cookies to take with us. Sounds good to me. I'll hurry home as quickly as I can. I don't want to get in trouble with the teacher. Somehow, I think if you ever do get in trouble with the teacher, you'll be able to talk your way out of it. Teacher has a soft spot for you. As she should. Daryl took a bite of his pancakes with a grin on his face. Every day with Rika, he was just a little bit happier than the day before. He didn't know how she did it, but he was married to a very special woman. Chapter 10 At lunchtime, Rika had fun decorating the school with Gretchen and Doris. The three of them worked quickly, along with some of the older girls, to transform the school into a fun place for everyone in the community. Gloria watched it all with a grin. I'm going to dance with Charlie tonight. He asked me if he could have a dance already. Rika smiled at the girl. Charlie was one of the boys she'd be graduating that year, and he was a little more than a year older than Gloria. I think that sounds like a lot of fun. Me too. Gloria worked to pin a paper chain to one end of the chalkboard. Do you think any of us will be able to concentrate on our studies this afternoon with the school already decorated for the dance? Rika shrugged. I'm not sure, but if you can't, we won't be able to have a lot more dances. Gretchen was more excited than anyone. The first time Reginald kissed me was after a dance in this very school. The last several teachers we've had wouldn't let us use the schoolhouse for dances, so it's been a long time since I've been to one. Rika realized that Gretchen was much younger than her. 
She'd only graduated from school in May, before Rika started teaching in September. It seemed odd that one of her closest friends had almost been one of her students. She looked over at Gloria and wondered if one day she'd be a friend as well. Doris had given Pri and Pauline their lunches on one of the school benches, and the little girls watched everything as it happened around them. They were excited because everyone else was happy. Who will I dance with? Pri asked as everyone was decorating. Doris had an answer for everything. You can dance with your brothers and with Papa. You might even be able to talk Uncle Daryl into dancing with you. He's a good dancer. I have a feeling Uncle Daryl's dances will be taken, Rika said with a smile. Gretchen grinned over at Rika. You're really happy. I've seen you smile more in the past hour than I have in all the time I knew you before Daryl arrived here in town. I think marrying him just might be the best thing that ever happened to you. I think so, too. Rika couldn't help but grin. Doris, you sure do have a pretty exceptional twin brother. Oh, I know that. He's told me every day of our entire lives. Doris replied saucily. Everyone laughed at that. Are your other brothers like him? Rika asked, still worried about Gretchen needing to marry someone. They're all fun-loving like Daryl, but not all are as conscientious. Twins have a special tie to one another, and if anything upset me, Daryl was there. My other brothers didn't have twin sisters. That makes a lot of sense, Rika said. She was glad she finally understood what had made Daryl so understanding. Doesn't it? That's my theory. I might not be right, but I will say, any time I was upset about anything, I'd run to him first. Our other sisters went to each other, but for me, it was always Daryl. Dora smiled. I love watching my twins have that same connection with each other. Rika loved how Doris had immediately taken on Harf's kids as her own. The moment she'd stepped into town, they'd been hers. It didn't matter to her that she hadn't given birth to them. Gretchen smiled. I think we're done. I'll be coming to the dance with the butlers. Doris is going to need help with her four, so she can spend some time dancing in the arms of the man she loves. Doris smiled. I don't know what I would have done if I'd come to this town and you, too, hadn't been here. You've made my life a good one. I just hope I bring you half as much joy as you bring me, Gretchen said with tears in her eyes. They both looked at Rika, so she knew she had to say something. I'm just glad I can bring joy to your lives. Dora sighed. You've been hanging around my brother too much. You're starting to tease everyone. You like it, though, right? Rika asked, a twinkle in her eye. I suppose I can tolerate it. Doris took the girls by the hands and led them toward the door. See you tonight, sister. If the pupils were inattentive that afternoon, Rika didn't notice. She was too antsy for the dance herself. She dismissed school 15 minutes early so she could go home and start supper. She wanted to be able to leave for the dance just as soon as Daryl had eaten. No one would be able to get into the school until she was there to unlock it. She started supper, and she went to her wardrobe and picked out a pretty purple dress that she had never worn before. It had been made for a dance that she'd just known a young man back home would ask her to, and he'd asked someone else instead. Now she had a reason to wear it, and she couldn't be more excited. She laid it out on the bed to air out, planning to put it on right before Daryl was due home. She spent some time on her hair, trying a new hairstyle that swept up a lot of her hair but left some of her curls hanging loosely around her face. She knew it would please Daryl, but she wanted to make sure she looked like a schoolteacher as well. She put supper on the table and hurried to change before he came in, smoothing the skirt of her dress down and looking into her little hand mirror. She couldn't see the full effect of the dress, but she hoped it looked as good as she thought it did. Daryl came in as she set the mirror down, and he stopped in the doorway. His face and hands were dirty from his hard day at work, so he went to the sink and pumped the water, cleaning himself up. I'm afraid I'll mush you too much if I touch you. 
she laughed. I can be fixed. As long as you don't get my dress dirty, I won't mind even a little bit. He walked to her and cupped her face in his hands, his lips descending on hers. Do you have any idea what it means to me to have you waiting for me at the end of a hard day of work? I'm not complaining about what I do, but you make everything worthwhile. Rika smiled at that. Gretchen commented today, how much more I smile now that you're in my life. I don't think I can express the difference in me since your arrival. Well, I think we should stop this mutual admiration and eat our supper. Someone has to be to the school in a few minutes. Daryl grinned at her, sitting down at the table where his supper waited for him. As soon as I've eaten, I'm going to put the dishes to soak in the sink and head over to the school. You're going to need to change and follow me over. He nodded. I can do that. I was hoping you wouldn't mind going over on your own for just a little while. She shrugged. I'm used to being a wallflower at dances, remember? I do remember. I'm used to running around begging every girl there to dance with me and hoping one of them will have pity on me. Rika grinned. Somehow I have a very hard time believing that. You don't seem like the type of man who has ever lacked for female attention. You just don't know how bad our reputations were back home. Even ask Doris. No one would look at any of us romantically. So none of your other siblings are married? Mary got married, but no one is quite sure how. Elizabeth married a man who worked for her. Susan was a mail-order bride. Wally was a mail-order groom. Do you see a recurring theme here? Well, I wouldn't have been able to resist you, even with your reputation. I would have taken one look into those big brown eyes, and I'd have fallen at your feet. That sounds like something I would really enjoy. It's too bad you weren't there to put me out of my misery sooner. He winked at her. Actually, I think that if I'd met you sooner, I wouldn't have been ready for you. I needed to go through life just as long as I did, so I'd appreciate you like I should. He took her hand and brought it to his lips. I'm ready to dance all night with you. As soon as they finished eating, she soaked the dishes. I'm heading over. Please hurry. Rika told him. I will. You get everything opened up, and don't dance with any other dashing men who come your way. She laughed. As if I would. She hurried out the door to the school, opening the building at ten minutes before seven. As soon as it was open, women brought in cookies and cakes, and the small band set up on the teacher's platform. The turnout was bigger than she'd expected. Some people would have to dance outside, and she loved the idea of being one of them. Dancing under the stars with the man she loved sounded like one of the most romantic things she could possibly do. By the time Daryl joined her, they were on the second song. People all over were dancing and enjoying themselves. She even spotted Gloria dancing with her young man. Daryl walked to her and bowed low. Mrs. Miller, may I have the pleasure of this dance? Rika smiled and nodded, going right into his arms. There was nowhere else in the world she would rather be than right there with the man she loved. The schoolhouse was crowded, so she suggested dancing outside under the stars as she'd thought about just a short while before. As soon as they were away from others, she met his gaze with her own. It was dark, but some people had hung lanterns up around the playground. Daryl, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. There is? What's that? He seemed so at ease and so happy with her there, dancing in the moonlight. I thought this would be a good place to tell you that you've changed my life. The things that were mundane, before all have meaning now. I love you with everything inside me, Daryl Miller. His grin was so big, she was glad she told him, even if he never reciprocated her feelings. I knew I was done for the minute I saw you. I was so glad to find out I wasn't marrying Gretchen. I love you right back, Frederica. You do? Really? Really? There's no one on this planet who would be a better wife for me. He leaned down and kissed her softly. 
Rika should have protested that he was kissing her in front of her students, but she just couldn't make herself care about it. Thank you for coming into my life. Does this mean the courtship part of our marriage is over? He asked, with a grin. I hope the courtship part of our marriage never ends. But it does mean we can move on to other things as well as courtship. Do you think your students would notice if I swept you up in my arms and carried you off to our house? He glanced over at the house and thought about how far it really was. She laughed. Yes, I do. Dance is over at nine. You can wait that long. I've already waited a lifetime for you. What's another couple of hours?